There are an overwhelming number of videos, articles, and polls online asking the same question. Love or career? Not only is the question strange and its implication that the two are mutually exclusive, it's also generally directed just at women. Offline, women often have similar hypothetical dilemmas presented to them, about how they could possibly manage work and family, or are questioned about their commitment to marriage if they're also career-driven. So, of course, something so predominant in real life inevitably leaks into the world of film and TV. Watch any Hallmark movie ever, and you'll see that women deciding between their job and a man is a concerningly common plot point. This idea in film ends up pitting two tropes against each other, the working, career-oriented woman who ultimately chooses her career, or only wanted her career in the first place, and the lovebird, the woman who decides in the end on valuing her relationship over work. These two tropes are consistently portrayed as black and white. The working woman becomes sad, mean, and lonely, while the lovebird, generally the main character, is glad to be free of her taxing workload. One of the most famous examples of a working woman in film is The Devil Wears Prada's Miranda Priestly. She's best known for how ruthless and cold she is, for the toxic workplace she creates, and of course, for her need to constantly excel in her work, often at the expense of others. Tales of your incompetence do not interest me. In the on-screen struggle of career or love, she has clearly chosen career, and suffers due to it, in part because of how she overworks herself and the toxicity of her workplace, but also because she's lacking in any romantic relationships. The Dragon Lady, career obsessed. Snow Queen drives away another Mr. Priestley. The working woman's success is all-consuming, forces her to neglect any other aspects of her life, and makes her unlikable, detached, and mean. Chan is cold. If she was sitting across from you on a train and she wasn't moving, you might think she was dead. Often, she acts similarly to how male bosses are portrayed, yet is shown in a far more villainous way. Through this form of portrayals, films manage to tell their audience that a woman valuing her career and devoting significant time to it will inevitably become an evil, unhappy spinster. And the truth is, the depiction of hard work that these films present is genuinely toxic, and might lead you to unhappiness. Having a career that causes you constant stress and takes up all your time probably isn't a good idea. So the problem isn't exactly that these working women are unhappy, because generally their work life is actually pretty terrible. Rather, the problem is that we're repeatedly shown portrayals of women like this who are made unhappy or corrupt by their careers, without being shown nearly enough women who have a good work and life balance, but are still passionate about their career. While the loveless boss usually represents the outcome of choosing career, the main character in these sorts of films is generally an example of choosing love. After spending much of the film unable to decide, this generally female character almost always settles on choosing a guy instead of her dream career. To be fair, this dream career usually doesn't pan out how they anticipated. Nonetheless, these portrayals show us again and again women who are always unhappy at work, but happy in a family or relationship setting, which is a problem in of itself. When we see the main character in this role, she's generally far too occupied by her work to find any time for the love interest, and in this scenario, it's pretty reasonable to question if their relationship is working. Really, the problem is the implication that working hard means that you cannot possibly have time for a significant other. Along with their job supposedly taking time away from their significant other, women's careers are often sometimes portrayed as taking time away from their children, seeing as the majority of child minding generally falls on women. A lot of the women that I know that have to balance work and family are constantly stressing about how pursuing their careers will impact their children later in life. The really unfortunate thing is that there is some validity to the idea that women have to choose. Not because they're incapable of handling both, but because there's a double standard that allows men to devote plenty of time to work but also have a family. Whereas some men, as is portrayed on film, would criticize women for working too much or not spending enough time with them. I'm looking at you, Nate from The Devil Wears Prada. You used to make fun of the runway girls. What happened? Now, now you've become one of them. For example, as BBC reports, promotion to a top job in politics increases the divorce rate for women, but not for men. This trope creates a self-reinforcing cycle. Historically, women are often limited in their careers in order to parent or do housework, which likely had some role in creating this trope. 
Then the existence of the trope reinforces the idea in viewers that women cannot have a healthy work and family life simultaneously, which results in more real-life women not being able to take on all the opportunities they like, which reinforces this trope, and so on. Of course, women shouldn't be forced to choose between the two things that make them happy, the same way men usually aren't forced to choose. Though film and TV's portrayal of this choice is in some ways accurate, in that real-life women sometimes need to choose, it only serves to reinforce the idea that women can't have both, instead of giving us women who are happy with their job and with their love life. The character who arguably creates the most problems here is the main character's partner, specifically their husband or boyfriend, seeing as I've never really seen this trope with any non-straight relationships. It's often their comments and criticisms that convince the main character to quit their job, generally about work taking too much time away from their relationship. And it's valid for someone to need more time with their partner, but they always turn it into needless blame, into accusations of, you're not acting like yourself. The person whose calls you always take, that's the relationship you're in. I hope you two are very happy together. This is especially unreasonable when you take into account the love interest actions, especially in The Devil Wears Prada. Thinking Nate sucks is certainly not a hot take, and there is a reason why that's the case. After Nate constantly chides Andy for the changes her new job demands of her, the film ends with him announcing that he'll be moving to a different city for his job. The very sort of thing that, if it had happened to Andy, would have made Nate really upset. This sort of double standard is one of the many things that makes the trope so problematic. Not only does this trope perpetuate even more tropes, like the one I've talked about today, it also causes a lot of other issues. Most predominantly, it limits women with a pointless dichotomy and tells us it's necessary to choose between a successful career or a love life. Do you think I'll wake up one morning and regret not being a lawyer? Yes, I'm afraid that you will. Not as much as I regret not having a family. Through this choice, the trope also enforces the idea that either your career or, more often, partner need to completely fulfill you. Characters in these films also only find success when they're overworked. Characters are shown doing well at their job, like Andy in The Devil Wears Prada, but it's always at the cost of burnout, instead of just having characters do well at work while working a normal amount of hours. Portrayed in such awful workplace environments, it's easy to assume that a choice needs to be made between love and career. After all, in these films, the main character's career takes up pretty much all of their time. My personal life is hanging by a thread, that's all. No, join the club. That's what happens when you start doing well at work, darling. Let me know when your whole life goes up in smoke. When is this time for a promotion? But in reality, most jobs are not so insanely demanding that it's impossible to spend time with friends, family, or a significant other. What we really lack is characters succeeding in difficult jobs without working themselves to death. And although it's a bit more subtle, perpetuating the love or career question also reinforces stereotypes about women being a bad choice to hire in case they leave their job to pursue family goals. In 2014, a study surveyed 500 managers and found that 40% were wary to hire women of childbearing age. So although pregnancy discrimination is technically illegal, it remains a prevalent issue and certainly shouldn't be reinforced by media. And you may be asking yourself, wait, is this whole video just an overly complex way of complaining about Nate from The Devil Wears Prada? And the answer is, probably. I want a home, I want a family, that's not something I'll sacrifice. No one's asking you to sacrifice that, Joan. I, I just want you to understand that you can do both. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all those cool things that makes the YouTube algorithm like me more. I'll see you next time.